What's up, Connection Church? I'm Cole Phillips, the lead pastor of the Connection Church, and I am so glad that you're joining us today. Whether you're with us at one of our physical campuses in San Marcos, come on, let's hear it for San Marcos. <laughs> or in Buda, let's give it up. Or you are joining us online today, come on. <laughs> We are so glad that you are with us today, and uh, we want to just welcome you here, especially if you are one of our VIPs. I'm talking about one of our first-time guests. Yes, we are a family expecting guests, and uh, we hope that you'll find a home right here with us. And you're here on a great day because we're continuing our series called Oceans of emotions, all right? This is a great series because right now I know we are experiencing an overload of emotions. Many of us are swimming in the sea of me, and uh, some of us, we just need the waves to calm down. Last week, we started out by looking at the Old Testament prophet, a guy named Jonah. And so Jonah, we kind of, you know the beginning of the story, he was in fear. We talked about fear because he was tossed overboard into the ocean where then he was swallowed by a big fish, but then he was spit out onto the beach, onto dry land, and God gave him a second chance to go to the city of Nineveh and, and share with them God's message. And so Jonah goes, he, he accepts the call of God, he goes to Nineveh, and he preaches the worst sermon ever preached in history, okay? In, in um, Jonah chapter 3, verse 4, Jonah grits his teeth, and he says, 40 more days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. And here's the miracle that happened. The miracle that happened was the entire city of Nineveh repented of their sin and turned to God. Wow. It was an amazing miracle. And I'll tell you this, no matter how bad this sermon that I preach today is, uh, that one, it's, it, it's got to be better than the one Jonah preached. And God used it to change a whole city. So I can't wait to see what God is going to do in our lives today with his word. But, uh, but you would think that Jonah then would be excited. He'd be pumped. Man, I was used by God to change a city and they're all saved. But you know how Jonah felt instead? Jonah was angry. That's right. Jonah got mad. He said, God, I knew that you would save those people and I didn't want them saved. And so in Jonah chapter four, verse one, it says this, but to Jonah, this seemed very wrong and he became angry. He became angry. He prayed to the Lord. Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. And this tells us a lot. I mean, first it tells us that as people, it's very natural for us to get angry. Sometimes we get angry about dumb things. Sometimes we get angry about the wrong things. But God is slow to anger. He's slow to anger. And I'm so glad about that in my own life because I know if God was not slow to anger, he'd probably always be very angry with me. So today's message, it, we, we're going to be talking about anger. And let me tell you, there is a disease that is spreading today in our culture. And it's what I like to call mad now disease. Right? Don't you know that people are feeling very angry right now? And uh, so here's the deal. Anger is one of our primary emotions that has been given to us by God. Now, I do want to talk with you if you have been on the receiving end today of someone's anger. Because this message could kind of be one of those triggering messages where I know you are feeling very hurt. And I am so sorry that you've had to deal with the anger of someone 
else. And I want you to know today that you're in the right place. You're with the right people because not only does God care about what you've gone through, but you have people right here who, who care about what you're facing today. And maybe you're even afraid to let anyone know about what you've gone through or maybe what you're facing right now. I want to encourage you to reach out, to let somebody know so that you can begin to experience healing in your life. Also, if you hold on to what you've experienced, the, the chances are very good that you will then repeat the cycle of anger towards someone else. And I know that you don't want to do that. Now, I, I want to tell you this story as we, uh, as we began today. In, in July of 2016, I had this awesome opportunity to travel to Bolivia with the, the organization called Compassion International. Now, this is the organization that lifts kids out of poverty, that feeds kids. And I even had the opportunity to meet one of the girls that our Connection Kids sponsors. Her name is Angelica. And um, what a beautiful girl. It was so great to get to see her. It was so exciting. But as part of the trip, uh, part of what I got to do it, it was this. Check this out. In Bolivia, they have tens of thousands of birds that will take over the fields and um, they, they will eat all of the crops that, that they use to feed the people there. And so part of our responsibility as we went was to, uh, was to thin out the crops, okay? The crops, uh, or thin out the, the, the flocks of the birds. And so what I did when I was there, I got to um, shoot a couple of, well, these birds. Actually, I was gonna be shooting thousands thousands of, of times a day. And it was so crazy because, um, because you would be standing there in the morning, you'd look up into the, the blue sky, it would be bright and clear, and then all of a sudden those birds would start flying and the whole entire sky would turn black because the, the sky was so thick with the birds. And so because I, I was shooting so much, I got this, uh, this shoulder shield, all right, because what happens when you shoot a, uh, you shoot a, a, a rifle, there, you, you shoot and the bullet goes that way, but the gun kicks back this way and there's always a recoil. There's always a recoil that comes back. And so what tends to happen is you're shooting and it leaves a mark. It leaves a bruise on you. The recoil always comes back against you. And that is the way anger is in our lives. You know, we're lashing out at the people around us, at, at someone else, and we think it's going to hurt them. But what ends up happening? It comes back. It always comes back on us. It comes back and it leaves a mark. The recoil is real. And we think we're hurting someone else, but we end up hurting ourselves. All right? And sometimes our anger just leaves a small bruise, and sometimes it leaves a major mark. And unfortunately, I know there are hundreds of people who are watching today, and you, your, your life, your relationships have been damaged because of anger. Maybe it's a relationship that was damaged because of anger. Maybe you fractured your family because of your anger. Maybe you've lost a job because of your anger. Or maybe you have even physically hurt someone else because of your anger. And you get mad and you just totally lose it. You lose control and things get broken. And I'm not just talking about when you get angry and you throw the remote control across the room and you break the remote control because what we really need to have is we need to have emote control where we, wow. where we get control of our emotions because what happens is our relationships get broken in the process. Some of you even have non-Christian friends 
who are, um, who are know you and they see you and they see the way that you get out of control in your anger and they just think, wow, I don't want to have anything to do with Jesus because they get so angry. And so the verse I want us to really focus in on today is found in the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. And this verse is one, I hope we will just own it today. We will get in our hearts and in our minds, and you will even memorize this verse in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, that says this. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Okay, there's three parts to this. Okay, the first one, he says this. I mean, we could say it this way. Correctly respond to your anger. Correctly respond to your anger. Okay, he says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not sin. And Paul is actually quoting the Old Testament in Psalm chapter 4, verse 4, that says, don't sin by letting anger control you. Yeah. Don't sin by letting anger control you. In your anger, do not sin. And it's encouraging to know that Paul doesn't say, don't get angry. He doesn't say that. If he said that, we would all be in big trouble yeah. because anger is a natural emotion. And if you never get angry about anything, I'd say, you know, it probably means you don't care very much about anything. I would say, you know, you probably don't have any convictions about anything, about what's right or what's wrong. And, and if you never get angry, I would tell you, just check your pulse. Make sure you're still, make sure you're still breathing, okay? But check it out. When you get angry, don't sin. Don't sin. Because when you don't sin, you're becoming more like Jesus. And that is God's goal for your life, that you would be more and more like Jesus and develop his character in your life. So, so the first thing, it says correctly respond to your anger. But then second, choose to deal with your anger. You got to choose to do something about it. You got to choose to respond. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. He's saying, don't sleep on your anger. Don't sleep on it, okay? And some of you are like, I'm so mad, I have not slept for weeks, <laughs> right? But that's not what he's saying. He's saying, deal with it quickly. Deal with it now before it gets infected, before it gets worse and it gets ugly. And the biblical principle is to get at it as soon as you can so it doesn't get worse. You start communicating clearly, not calling names, not lashing out at someone else, not getting violent. Instead of saying, you know, you make me so angry, you start to have constructive conversation, yeah. calm conversation, okay? So you've got to, once you realize that you're angry and you identify that you're ang angry, a timer starts and you say, okay, I know I need to deal with this. Now, now check it out. You may need to press the pause button, and you may need to sort of um, take a break or take a breath to calm down. Um, how do you do that? Well, you go outside, uh, get some fresh air, because if you don't, you might just explode all over someone and make things worse. And definitely, if you go outside and somebody's standing out there, you know, don't take your anger out on them. And they're like, I don't even know what's going on. Uh, I was minding my own business. In order to do this, You've got to develop some patience, okay? Some patience, and, and check this out. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit in your life. Some of us, we say, oh, I, I just don't have any patience. Well, if you have the Spirit of God, if you have Jesus, if you know Jesus, he gives you his Spirit, and he gives you his patience. Proverbs 16, 32 says, patience is better than strength. Controlling your temper is better than capturing a city. Okay, so this is better. Like, you want to come off strong. You know, I got to be strong. Well, no, you, you need to be calm and be patient. And, and it might just mean that you tell yourself, you know what? <laughs> I don't know everything. I mean, there's some things maybe I'm just not realizing. I, I'm probably right about how I'm seeing this, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I... I, I need some more information. And sometimes we don't just get the, see the whole picture and, 
and, and see the whole story. Yeah. And the biggest thing that we forget is this. God is in control. God is in control. Yeah. So our anger always requires a response from us. When I get angry, I've got a choice to make about how I'm going to handle it. How am I going to respond? And you can always respond in a God-honoring way, or you can respond in a way where the devil wins. And so what we want to do is we want to cancel the devil's plans, okay? Do not give the devil a foothold. When your response, it wounds somebody else or wounds yourself, guess what? The devil has already won. He's already won. You just gave him a foothold in your life, and that's all that he needs. We need to remember that there is a spiritual battle that is taking place all around us. It's a, it's a battle between God and the devil. Now, now, understand that the devil is a defeated enemy. He's already defeated. He's a loser. But if you give him a foothold, then he's going to use that to mess up your life. Yes. Now, check this out. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a big fork here, and, and a fork is a tool that can be used for good or for bad, depending on what I choose. Like I could use this fork to, uh, to eat a salad, a delicious salad, right? That'd be so healthy and it would be good. Or I could use this fork and I could stab you in the eye, you know? That would be bad. That would be bad. And anger is like that. It can be good or bad depending on how I handle it. Let me talk about the destructive way first, all right? Uh, so, so we can get to the good stuff last. But the destructive way to handle anger is to let uh, revenge take over, and that leads to hatred. And you know the cycle just continues to repeat. It's consuming, and it shoots forward, and it kicks back onto you. It kicks back in your life. So, you know, some people in this negative way of dealing, destructive way of dealing with anger, they want to express their anger. These are the, the spewers, and they're angry, and they just uh, explode and hit things and punch things and yell and scream and all of these things. They're, they're the spewers who express it. Then there are the, the suppressors, those that push it down. Instead of being a spewer, you're more of a stewer. And you get it down in you and you just stew on it and it gets really ugly and it gets really toxic in there. And then what's going to happen is it's going to start eating you from the inside out and it always comes out. It's always going to come out. Trust me on this. It will get out. And so since anger though is an emotion that God has given us, we can also use it constructively to let it motivate us to do something, to make a difference. And, and sometimes we're gonna get angry about what we see that's wrong in the world. If you see somebody being abused, you see an injustice in the world, then you get that holy fire burning in your life that says, I've got to do something about this, something constructive. And it's my responsibility to learn how to handle my anger in a constructive yes. way instead of a destructive way. You know, anybody can tear down. Anybody can destroy. And it takes a long time to build something up. It takes just a moment to yes. tear it all down. So in James chapter 1, verse 20, James writes this. He says, human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. When you get mad and you say, I'm going to deal with this on my own and take it in my own hands, okay, it doesn't move you any closer to the goal, to the result, the righteous result that God wants for your life. So I want to talk about what do we do if we want our anger to honor the Lord. When I get mad, what am I going to do? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize that I'm angry. Okay, you're mad. Just admit it. Just admit it and admit it to yourself and admit it to God. Now, what you're not going to do is you're not going to necessarily go and tell everybody else how mad you are. Okay, you're mad. <laughs> you don't have to post about it. You don't have to tweet about it. Right. 
You don't have to make everybody else mad about what you're mad about. You're not trying to, to bully or threaten or scare anyone because you're angry. You're not trying to control someone else with your anger. You just admit and recognize that you're angry. <clears throat> then next, you're going to take responsibility for your anger, okay? You take responsibility for it. You identify, what am I angry about? This is, this is how I'm feeling. And if you don't define what's really going on and what's really got you upset, you're going to end up blaming someone else for your anger. You're going to end up playing the victim card, and, and you're a victim, but check it out. You are not a victim. In Christ, you are a victor. You're an overcomer, all right? So you can take responsibility for your anger and what you choose to do with it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to release our anger. You're going to release your anger. That means you don't send that spewing first text that you, you, that you hammer out with your thumbs, okay? <laughs> Sometimes you just need to bite your tongue, okay, as a way to, to make sure that you're not being destructive. Look, I've got a, a soda bottle here, all right, and I'm shaking it up. I'm going to shake it up really nice and good, and, uh, and check it out. What, what's going to happen if I open this bottle very quickly? What's going to happen? It's going to explode all over the place, right? But instead, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to release, I'm going to release it slowly. You hear that? Okay, hold on. We, we got to back off. Got to back off. You have patience right now? Ah, oh, look at that. I released it slowly. See, what you do is you don't express it. You don't suppress it. Instead, you release it. You release it. You give it to God. You pray and you say, God, right now, I'm really angry. I'm really mad. And uh, I need you. I, I need your peace in my life. I need your power in my life. And I want to give my anger to you. Can you imagine what your life would be like if you dealt with your anger in a godly, constructive way instead of a destructive way? I mean, your relationships would be so much different. Your marriage would have so much more intimacy. Your friendships would be so much closer. Your relationship with your kids or your parents would be so much deeper. Your work relationships would be more connected and everything would be so much better. Yes. So as your pastor, Here's what I envision. Here's what I want to see. I want, to, I want the people in Hayes County to look at us and to say, wow, those people, look at the difference in them. I mean, I used to know him. I lived next door to her. They were so angry. They would get mad. They would fly off the handle about anything. But, but there's such a difference in their life. There's so much peace yes. in their life. Yes. And I want and I need what they have. Our world needs peace more today than ever before. And God wants to make us instruments of his peace in our world. That's what God wants for us as your pastor. That's what I want for your life as well. And here's what I know. As I look across the landscape uh, of our world, I know there is a lot right now to be frustrated, to be, uh, to be hurt about, to be mad about. There's a lot that we could be mad about. And this week, I'm sorry to tell you this, but there's going to be even more to, to get mad about. There's going to be even more things that are going to trigger you. But remember this, human anger doesn't lead to the righteous results 
that God wants for you. And, and so when you get angry, you have a choice to make. You can either choose pain or you can choose peace. You can choose more pain or you can choose more peace. So let's choose the peace of God today and let it reign and rule in our hearts and our lives and in the world around us today. That's going to be our choice today. We want to give that anger to God and thankfully he, he can take it all because he bore a mark on his body as well. He took the marks, he took the recoil of our sin into his, onto his body because of the, the result, the recoil of sin. And so because of that, he can give you peace. He can change your heart. He can change your life. He can change your mind. Let's pray to him right now. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. And God, help us to remember that when we feel angry, this natural emotion, God, we have a choice to make, that we can either choose your peace or we can choose to take it in our own hands. It always leads to more pain. So we pray, God, you would make us instruments of your peace. I pray for all of those today who are on the receiving end of anger, that you would give each person the power to, to reach out for help. God, reach out to you for help, to experience healing, and to reach out to someone else, God, even someone at the Connection Church. God, I pray that you would uh, replace the anger in our hearts and our lives with your peace. And God, ultimately, that we would trust in you, that, that we thank you that you received the, the recoil of sin onto your body, that you gave your life on the cross so that we could have life, so that we could have peace. And I pray for anyone right now who is listening who would say today is the day. I, I don't, I don't want to live in anger anymore. I don't want to live mad at the world, but, but I want to experience the peace that only Jesus can give. So you could pray a prayer like this. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I need you in my heart and my life. Thank you for giving your life on the cross for me. And today I give you my life. Change me from the inside out. Renew me and make me part of your forever family. And from now on, I want to follow after you with the power of your spirit. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a great day together. And I can't wait to see you next week. Have a blessed week.